Welcome back. Today we're going to be looking at graphs of logarithmic functions. So today we're going to be analyzing the domain of a logarithmic function as well as how to graph it and how to graph any shifts associated with the log functions. So let's go ahead and get started. All right, the first thing we're going to look at is how to find the domain of a logarithm. We talked briefly last time about this, but we're going to expand a little more on it now. Um, this is going to be our third domain condition. So if you remember back when we talked about domains, anytime you saw the word domain, it was really important to think about you can't have a number over zero. You cannot have a negative number inside of a square root. And now the third thing is if you have a logarithm in, or a natural log, you cannot have a zero or a negative number. And so the inside, and we'll call this x, x has to be bigger than zero. Not bigger than or equal to, x has to be bigger than zero. And so in finding the domain, it's going to look a lot like the square root, we're just going to change the sign. So we're going to take the inside of the logarithm, and we're going to say x minus 2 has to be greater than zero. And when we solve for x by itself, we'll get x has to be bigger than 2. And so our new domain is 2 to infinity. Oh, but I've made one mistake right here. It cannot include 2. Because it doesn't have the line underneath it, it doesn't have a hard bracket right there, it doesn't have an inclusive bracket, and we leave it alone. Same thing's going to happen here. We're going to say x minus 5 has to be bigger than 0, not equal to it, which means x has to be bigger than 5, which means our domain is 5 to infinity, not including 5. So that's kind of the, how you find the domain and set domain restrictions on logarithmic functions. This includes logs of any base and natural logs. A key thing to point out. All right, let's keep going. So now we're going to look at graphing these things. Now that we have the domain, we're going to graph these. And we're going to look at the original graph of the exponential function. Here's an exponential function with the point 1, 2. And because we said that logarithms are just inverses, or the way that you undo an exponent, exponent or exponential function, you're just going to reflect that across the line y equals x, which turns this orange graph into the graph of log base 2, which is one of the parent graphs. Obviously, if we did log base b of x, it would be intersecting that line b comma 1, just like the exponential function inter intersects the line 1 comma b. All right, let's get started with graphing a logarithm. So here it says state the domain, range, and asymptote of a logarithmic function. I think we're going to plot the exact same two points that we used to plot. Um, we're going to find the two easiest points to plot with a logarithm, and then we'll graph from there. And so we have a base of one-fifth, so what would be the nicest, neatest number in the world would be one. I'm always going to start with one, or what would turn my inside of my log to a one. So the log of one, no matter what the base is, is always zero. You might think like, well, why is that? Well, think about an exponent, right? No matter what you do with an exponent, if you raise it to the zeroth power, you get one, right? And so if you were to switch those up and you go log base x of one, you're gonna get zero, no matter what that x value is. And so we have the point one comma zero. Given that there's no shifts, that's going to always be a point on our logarithmic function. And then we're gonna look at the base and use the base to find the second nice neat point. So one fifth, if we plot the point one, com 1 over 5, we end up with 1 as our logarithm. That's because x to the 1, or 1 fifth raised to the 1 is equal to 1 fifth. And if you just swip, swap that around to look at the log, the base becomes your base. So the log base 1 fifth of 1 fifth is equal to 1. And so we've got the point 1 over 5, comma 1. And so, in order to look at our function, I think it's important to think about the domain before graphing the function so we know where to stop with our lines. And so we said our domain, the inside has to be greater than zero, right? And so if the inside is x, we know that x has to be greater than zero or zero comma infinity. Those are all our x values. And so if we look at our function, we say this line can never get into the negatives, so it's going to go straight up from there. And then as it goes down, it's going to increase greatly. If you wanted to plot one more point, you might think of another nice, neat point. And um, I think the looking at the base, one of the next nice, neat points you could do would be 5. And if you plug in 5 into that logarithm, log of 1 fifth to the 5, what common base does that have? I might try to write it differently as log base 1 fifth to the one-fifth 
raised to the negative one. Because one fifth raised to the negative one flips the fraction and turns it back into five. So that's just another cool way to write five. And we would get negative one as our f of x value. And so that falls in line with what we expect this graph to look like. And the logarithmic function looks a little like that. If it were a little bit straighter of a line. Boop. Like that. Okay. Uh, let's find the rest of the things that they ask for. They ask for the range. We see that this goes up forever and down forever. And so our range is going to be negative infinity to infinity. It goes from the bottom all the way to the top, never stops. There's no horizontal asymptote here. Um, there is, however, a vertical asymptote. And we see the vertical asymptote occurring in the spot of the parent function, which is at the line, the y-axis, x equals 0. If we want to sketch that vertical asymptote, we can. Maybe I'll use a line tool to do it and just draw a line straight up and down at the axis. Right there. All right, let's keep going and look at what happens when we shift it a little bit. Um, here's a logarithm shifted to the left by 4 because it's a plus sign on the inside. And so what used to be our vertical asymptote at the y-axis turns into a vertical asymptote at the line y equals negative 4. And now we're just going to plot some nice neat points and try to find some points that work out well. Um, I think the easiest point to find is when you end up with a 1 on the inside. And so if we draw a table of values, x, f of x, we say what point would yield a 1 on the inside of the log? Well, if we put a negative 3 in there, negative 3 plus 4 yields a 1, right? And so that f of negative 3 equals log base 3 of negative 3 plus 4, which is just 1 on the inside. And we just talked about how no matter what your log is, if you have a 1 on the inside, your answer is going to be 0. So we have the point negative 3 comma 0 as our x-intercept. And then in order to get one more nice neat point, I might try to make the base cancel out. And so let's say, well, how would we get 3 down there? A negative 1 would yield a result of 3 on the inside. So f of negative 1 is the same thing as the log base 3 of 3. Because we have a base and an exponent of the same thing, they're going to cancel out. And we're going to be left with just 1. So we have negative 1 comma 1 as a second point. And we've got a function we can graph. It looks like that. It looks a lot like the parent function shifted to the left by 4. Let's go look. The only difference would be that base of 3 instead of base of 2. There's our parent function with the base of 2 with the point zero or 1 comma 0 and 2 comma 1. Now those are going to be apart by 2 instead of 1 and shifted to the left by 4. So they're apart by 2 instead of 1, and it's shifted to the left by 4. Uh, the domain changed because the vertical asymptote changed. So the domain starts at that orange line, not including it because it's an asymptote, and goes to infinity. The range didn't change. We're still going down all the way and up all the way for infinite. So we're going to go negative infinity to infinity as our range. And then our asymptote did change. Our vertical asymptote ended up being x equals negative 4. All right, let's keep going. Um, I am going to hop down to here because this looks like a parent function. This looks like the function we've already graphed once with some nice neat points of if you plug in 1 for x, you get 2, right? Because if you plug in 1, that results in a 0. 0 plus 2 is 2. And if you plug in 2 for x, you get 3. So I'm going to plot those nice neat points and observe what happens with that vertical shift up of 2. So 1, 2, and 2, 3. You'll notice with the vertical shift, no horizontal movement happened. And so our horizontal asymptote stays exactly the same at x equals 0 from our parent function. And we can connect the dots. I'll do it blue. We can connect those dots and keep going to draw our function. Our domain is going to be from 0 to infinity, starting at that asymptote, going to the right forever. Our range is going to be the same. It's going to keep being the same. It's going to be negative infinity to infinity. And our HA, or our horizontal, oh, that's a vertical asymptote. Probably yelling at the screen when I wrote HA down here. That line's going vertically, so it's a vertical asymptote. Our vertical asymptote is 
x equals 0. All right. Just like you can um, move the function to the left or the right, you can also reflect the function. Here they have two reflections happening. As a little uh, review, the outside one is a vertical reflection. And the inside one is a horizontal reflection, just like the shifts work. And so this one would be a reflection across the x-axis. And the second one would be a reflection across the y-axis. All right. And so I think in order to do this one, it might be a little easier to plot the original function, just because reflection sometimes is easier to see it. So if we plot our original function, or let's call it a h of x, maybe call it p of x or parent function, um, log of x. This is a base 10 because it's missing a base, right? So we're going to plot the point 1 comma 0 because the log of 1 is always 0 and 10 comma 1 and graph that function. And now we can do either reflection in either order. I'm going to start with horizontal because it's on the inside, work myself outside. So the horizontal reflection would shift it across the y-axis. Look like that. And maybe I'll label this, call it, I don't know, g of x. This, I haven't done the vertical reflection yet, so all I've done is the horizontal log of negative x. Now to do the vertical reflection, do that in green. We'll just flip it across the x-axis. This one stays exactly the same. It's going to look upside down. And our final answer, the question they asked us for, this f of x, is that green function, which looks like that. They didn't ask us for the asymptote and everything, but I think we should go ahead and find it since we've been doing that. So the vertical asymptote didn't change because all we did was reflect, not shift. So the vertical asymptote is still the line y, x equals 0. The domain did change because it flipped across the axis, right? The domain of our green function, f of x, is going to be, let me move this over so we can leave it with that. The domain of f of x starts as far left as you can, so it starts at negative infinity. It goes all the way to the right until it stops at the y-axis. So it stops at zero. And the range, much like it has in the past, is going from the far bottom as you can, far negative infinity on the y-axis, all the way up to the top of the y-axis at positive infinity up here. All right. Let's keep going a little bit. And we will find a vertical asymptote given a natural log. It's a little tough to do um, without graphing it. I prefer graphing it, even though they didn't give us a graph. I'm going to graph it and see what happens. I know there's a vertical shift of 3, and there's a horizontal shift to the right of 1. And so the original function had a vertical asymptote at x equals 0, and it would have gone something like this, where it intersects at the point 1, 0, and then the nice neat point for the natural log is a little different. The nice neat point for the natural log occurs if we draw a table for x, ln of x. Remember, any log with a 1 yields 0. But how do, we, how do we nice neatly cancel that ln? The ln of what equals 1? Well, the base of ln is just log e, right? It's the exact same thing as log e. And so how do we get a 1 there? We put an e on the inside with a 1 as an exponent, and so we get e yields 1. And so we'd have the nice neat point of e comma 1. But we're shifting it up 3, and we're shifting it to the right 1. And so all we know about that vertical asymptote is that it's going to the right by 1. So the vertical asymptote used to be for the graph of f of x equals the ln of x. The vertical asymptote was at the y-intercept. It's shifting to the right 1. And so now the new vertical asymptote is going to be for f of x is going to be shifted to the right one, x equals 1. It would end up right where that original point was. The whole graph would shift over 1 and up 3. Um, nothing would change about the domain or the range. Oh, the domain would change. The domain would shift over 1. Let's go ahead and do that. The domain, even though they didn't ask for it, it's good to review. The domain would shift over and start at 1 and go to infinity, and the range would stay from negative infinity to infinity. And I might go ahead and graph it just for fun. Um, I'm going to erase this though so it doesn't get too crowded. And I'm going to say, okay, we're going to shift over by 1, right? So it used to be at 1, 0. 
Now it's going to be at two comma zero, and then it's going to shift. It was. It's also going to shift up three, so it's going to be two comma three is our first point, and then our second point was e comma one, right? And now instead of having e comma one, we are going to have e plus one because it shifted to the right by one, comma four. So that might be up here, and our new function looks like that. Or this is e plus one, comma four, because we shifted to the right one, and we shifted up four from that original point. All right, so that is how to graph um, logarithms and natural logarithms. Really important to remember all of the skills you've learned from shifting and reflecting past functions and applying them to these. I'm just going to work in exactly the same way. And if all else fails, it's not a bad strategy to draw a table and start plugging in some nice, neat points to see if you can find some on the graph. Uh, thank you for watching. I'll see you next time for logarithms and solving equations.